Today, we're continuing with our Peel and Stick series. Now, this is not a Peel and Stick wall covering, but it's the same material. And it's purchased by the same customer who has me doing all of her Peel and Stick. And this is a very popular uh, pattern for a child's room. And um, it's from It's from a new wall, A-N-E-W-A-L-L, -L, a new wall. I will have you know that eight panels costs a whopping, just so you don't think I'm joking, $719, okay? We're talking practically an $800 mural. Now, I don't care if you've never installed wallpaper. If you don't have the money to hire someone, you can do this. Follow some of these basic instructions and you can have this up yourself. Number one, although it's a peel and stick like product, it, it's a pasted, it has the paste on it. So here's what we're gonna do. First of all, I say it's peel and stick like, which means it's super thin and super fragile. That's number one. Number two is, because it's so fragile, your walls have to be super smooth. So that's number two. Number three is that after you wet the glue and activate it, I want you to go around with a clean hand or a microfiber cloth and just push the sides together. Just push them together because the product has to book, and this is a process called booking, where you simply take the wall covering like this and you do this. That's booking because it's like a page in a book. Okay, and so after you, and I would have a timer if you're new at it, put your smartphone on beep and after 15 minutes, Get that paper separated and start hanging it, okay? If you're new at it, do one at a time. The next suggestion I have for you is open up all of the sheets. You'll say, I don't have the room to do that. If you don't have the room to open up all the sheets and lay it out on the floor, which most people don't, then open them up individually. Inspect them for consistency and pattern and damage. These things are coming off of a computer print image image and being spit out by a printer and sometimes you'll get this a sheet that only has a partial pattern now that's because it's a mural and this is intended this is part of the the printout from the manufacturer and so they give you a partial now if you don't roll it all out and you're new at this and you plan out your room and you decide well, I'm gonna have an equal amount of pattern from the middle. Well, you'd be wrong because this only gives you four and a half inches of pattern. So please, don't make that mistake. I know somebody who did. And I don't want you to make my mistakes. So today we're hanging a product similar to yesterday's. It's, it's not a peel and stick, but it's the same exact material, but it just has a glue backing. And that's why I tell everybody, put glue on your peel and stick. Okay, take a look. I'm 13 feet in the air right now. I'm 13 feet in the air right now, so the camera's a little rickety, if you know what I mean. And I pre-wet the wall. There's nothing like getting a thin product like a peel and stick in place and not having enough ice under the product. I call it ice because ice is slippery and it's similar to ice. I don't know if you can see that from your angle, but you, you can understand. I wet it down, I use a water bottle, I put some glue on it. Don't get bogged down in these instructions that come with these peel and sticks. I'm gonna tell you the, uh, what I've discovered over the many years of my hanging wall covering, and that's this. There's a lot of people out there telling you how to do things they mean well, but they honestly don't know what they're talking about. 
This is how you do it. This is how you save time. And if you're a husband and wife, and you you got the weekend in front of you, and you're looking to tackle your peel and stick project, I'm here to tell you, you can do this. When you're putting up a thin product, such as a peel and stick, or a decal-like wall covering, same stuff. It's super, super thin, super thin. Okay, I just put my second sheet up against the first. Notice how I'm leaving that line? Oh yeah, I want that line. It's far more difficult to pull this apart than it is to do this. Okay, it's far more difficult to align it after a few minutes of it being up to do it like this than it is after a long time being too close and then it's a little overlap because it expands while it's on the wall. So my suggestion to you is simply leave a line that's about a 32nd of an inch give or take. Okay, we're talking about a hairline. Because you will see that when you come back in 15 minutes or so, and don't wait too much longer than that, you'll see that it's, it's this, because it's expanding. Okay? Nice and easy. Nice and easy. Wet it down, have a sufficient drop cloth down to catch the water. Easy does it. Finger in there. Don't use a smoother, you'll go right through it with this thin stuff. If it's not wet enough, you'll fail. I know it's messy. Wet it. You know when you should do YouTube how a person installs tint on a car window. Look at all the water they use. Same idea. And now I'm ready to move my seam together at the top. Now, I've just come up the ladder and I'm ready to join my seam that I was talking to you about just moments ago. You can see my space down there, but now look what has happened all on its own. Look at that. Case in point, folks. Very important to leave a space when you're working with certain wall coverings. If I were you, I would do it with all until you become familiar with your wall covering installation and the materials which you commonly use. But when you hang a lot of wallpaper, this procedure that I'm telling you won't hurt you. It can only help you. But it's extremely necessary and useful when hanging a peel and stick or a peel and stick like material such as the one you're looking at. Now I'm going to work out that seam, but if I had connected this seam the way many of you do, I would be dealing with a lot more overlap than I have to remedy now. Don't let this happen to you. So this is what I like to call buttoning up my seams with this type of material. I have my hairline sitting there for the last five minutes. I just come with my smoother. You're just sliding it over. If you 
you go crisscross, you're just able to just meet where they don't overlap. But it's got to be a super thin smoother. For those of the people who watch this video and they fast forward, they don't get the little tricks that those of you who sit and watch the whole thing get. Now you see you mismatched, you see that? You just go upward now. Upward nice and easy. I'm putting pressure on the left hand side of the smoother because I want to bring the left hand side down. Show you again. So you need to bring the left down or the right up. Let's try the left down since it's been setting up longer. Less inclined to go back after you move it. Pressure on the left side. so good until this as I came down on my fourth sheet about three quarters of the way down from the ceiling I'm getting a more than slight mismatch so if I would have pulled this down here you wouldn't see this but you would see this you'd see this mismatch. Okay, so, what do we do here? I'll talk, and you can watch. How's that? With the help of water, With the help of water and very clean hands, we got to fix this. Get some water under there. So, we're going to displace the material this way. You see, when you get a wrinkle out of your bed, you just pull it up and down. Not the same thing here. Here, you can't go up and you can't go down because if you do, you have a mismatch. So, when you go up and down, you, you mess up the pattern. But to match the pattern, you see we have slightly too much material here. Slightly. I'm going to say 3 16 of an inch. Now, that can be caused by differences in your wall, okay? A wall sometimes and, and you can't see it, but walls come in and out with different repairs or a little more compound at the top. This is a, an 11 foot wall. And so the chances of mismatching are far greater with longer walls than it is with an eight foot wall. This is how you do it. Match it up. And then the extra material that should have covered above us is now needing to go somewhere. And we're simply gonna push it to the right. Just, just spread it out. Don't put it back toward your seam, you'll be mismatched again. Nice and easy. Do not run over these, these, um, these buckles, they will become 
uh, mismatched wrinkles and it will look like bleached lines because you will stress the color right off the material. This is a latex ink, not the best way to color wallpaper. Nevertheless, it is. Everything is earth friendly today. And so the qualitative difference is significant than the products that used to be made. In a moment, I will show you the success you will have too. And you're gonna get mismatches. You just, you just gotta understand why they came okay. and how to get rid of them. Nice and easy, nice and easy. Go easy with your smoother because Think about it. If you keep going over the same area with a piece of plastic, what's gonna happen? You're gonna heat it up because of friction and you're gonna remove color. Okay, so the least amount, the better, right? Okay, so you judge. I'll bring you in now. What do you think? You're saying, where's the seam? As I am. Okay, here it is. So we're matched up. Now I just have to move it over, like so. Okay. Just move it over and let, let it expand. And then come back to it a little later, not too long. And then just lay it down, okay? She's not finished yet. When I get down closer to the camera where I can speak, I'll explain what I'm doing. Please just watch what I'm doing. I just hung the sheet and the objective is going to be to keep it square. So oftentimes when you're hanging wall covering, you're worried about the seam, the seam, the seam, right? and you neglect the opposite end of your seam. And then when you get to this one, it's not straight, it's not level with this. When you put this on, do you realize that these two points are level? But if you overdo it, or you don't take into consideration this issue, this will be three quarters of an inch longer, or half an inch, especially if it's 54 inch goods. You can be off an inch or more. The wall covering just bends, and it looks perfectly straight. Let's keep our wall covering square. What, is, what do I mean by that? I mean parallel with the initial plumb line. Remember in the beginning, we made a plumb line. What is a plumb line? It's what a lot of people call a level line, but it's in the trade, it's called a plumb line, which means that it's physically straight from top to bottom. If your plumb line is off, which in most cases it's not going to be, but it can become off if you don't pay attention to keeping your wall covering square. And all that means is that this part is level with this counterpart over on its right. A hint that will tell you that you're off square is a bunch of buckles in your wall covering. If you have a bunch of buckles, you say, oh, they're wrinkles. You get from the left to the right and you'll see that if you have, say, roosters, you have the head at the left and you have barely the eyes all the way on the right because you didn't pay attention to what I'm covering here. See, I'm keeping it square. You see, I know it's square. I mean, the paper's cut square. So, I get out the air bubbles, I know I'm square. As best as I can be, you know? And so, I want you to work both sides with your hands. So, really, you're pushing from the center outward. That's all. And so, you'll have success. 
And if the paper gets stubborn, remember you're in control. Add a little water to it underneath it so she moves easily. See these buckles? We're going to keep it square. You're in charge and you just go with it. If you're a professional paper hanger, this is one of the reasons why once you go beyond nine feet of wall, you have to charge a percent more because you have a lot more finessing to do with wall covering that's 10 feet or more. And for that reason, because walls are imperfect, and because of that, you need to move your wallpaper left and right accordingly. Careful to cut through the entire bottom when you're doing this. You just finish up your job, you're excited, you're almost done, and you don't cut all the way through, and then you tear this, like this, and you, you're connected, and then you rip it. Careful, careful, careful. Nice and easy. Don't rush anything when you're hanging wallpaper. Leave that to the painters. And that, with the exception of the top part having to be cut, is, is how you install an accent wall with peel and stick or peel and stick like material. There you go. Why don't you back up a little bit and show them the beautiful installation? If you like the video, please click on like, subscribe to our channel, and please let us know what you think. Thanks for watching. Spencer Colgan is wallpaper, and stay tuned for more on our peel and stick series.